What's going on guys? Stevie from the Minimasters here and today I'm going to show you how to fix a cracked engine cross member. So real quick backstory, I'm driving on the highway and I'm coming on an on-ramp to get on and like that huge ginormous pothole, had to be like six inches deep, comes up, I hit this thing and I get the death wobble, blew out a shock and after replacing the shock, didn't really fix it. So finally I climbed into my truck and I found this. Okay, so for those unfamiliar with this location because normally there's an engine sitting in this area. So here's the engine bay. Okay, so front of the truck, back. And what belongs here is the bracket for axle pivot bracket. Okay, so there's your beam right there that goes to your passenger side. There's your beam that goes to your driver's side. So that beam goes all the way over here and it bolts right to here. And so what it was happening was it was giving me just enough play to get death wobble and make everything go. And I mean, look at it. It's just bad all the way around. So there's two ways to go about doing this. Either you sell your truck or you cut out the entire engine cross member. I should say third way. And the third way is what we're going to do today. We're going to fix this. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grind off some of these old welds. Now, I had done this in the past when this was actually fairly mild, okay? When I did this in the past, the only crack that was here was a little piece right here that was cracked and went over a little bit. Something I discovered, and my weld fixed it for the time, but as you can see, the pothole really did us in elsewhere, okay? And I have some of these pieces, but we really can't make any of that work. But first thing we need to do with all kinds of stress cracks in steel is you have to grind everything down to, sit to find any more of the cracks. So I can just look at this and see that's a crack right there. Believe it or not, there's another one that's starting to go off in this direction. Clearly, this one over here has creeped all the way over to the edge. And then we also have this one here. So we need to identify all the cracks still existing because if you leave a crack, they come back and get you. So I'm gonna grind off everything, make it nice and smooth, bring it back, and we'll take a look at this. All right, guys, so here we are. I really cleaned this sucker up here. And as you can see, you can start to see more of those cracks. So you've got this one here. This guy, really obvious. You've got a little one right here. And then you've got one right here. And then suspicious of something here and here and then here, and then I've got one that's something maybe right here. So the next step here is I'm actually gonna cut this out. So I'm gonna make a square cut, and that's where I'll weld in new steel because there's just no point in trying to save this. I can always go back and I can drill these two holes and have, you know, and it'll work just like factory. So I'm gonna cut this out, bring you guys back. All right, so I cut out all the bad, and I gotta say, it already starts to look a whole lot better when you cut the cancer out. So the nice thing about this is I was able to clean up down here more because of now that I can dip the uh, flap disc in farther and there aren't any more cracks. There's only the cracks in all the areas that I previously said. Now there is one, like I said, I'm still suspicious of, you can see it there. Uh, so that will also get addressed. Now, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cut wheel and I'm actually gonna dig a trench in each crack, okay? Now, once the trench is in the crack, okay, that's something I can backfill with welds and so I'm not worried about penetrating this steel. Okay, because that's what happens if you try to top weld it the way it is. You may not penetrate to the other side. So you want to dig your little trench there. The other thing we're going to do is you're going to go along your crack, right? And probably just about there, you're going to take a drill bit and you're going to drill a hole straight through. And the idea of that is to prevent the crack from cracking out further. So if we just left this right here, eventually it's going to work its way all the way around and we'll have a problem. By drilling a hole, you essentially put a stop in it and that's it and then that's something you can weld back. So, also it is hot and this is a very 
hot and sparky job, so make sure you have all your safety equipment, okay? So I have a face shield that wear a mask because of the dust, angle grinder, gloves, and then of course, because it is like 90 degrees out, I have little red here to keep me cool. Love this little Milwaukee fan here. And I got some water close by. So definitely take care of yourself, take your time, and do the job right. I'll bring you back when I drill and cut everything. All right, guys, here you are. As you can see, I cut out where the cracks were. And then you can see nice, perfect little holes where I went to the end of the crack and I drilled it out. That's how we're going to keep this thing from cracking. So the next step here is I'm going to make my piece that I'm going to weld in place. So I have a piece of flat stock here and it's about the same thickness. It might even be a little bit thicker, but who cares? Thicker is always good. And uh, so I'm going to cut it to the right shape and clean the metal. And then I'll start by tack welding it in place and then I'll bring you back. All right, guys, here we are. We are nearing the finish line with this. So you can see I just tacked all four corners. And then just out of curiosity, I started to fill in the one cut line that I put in there where a crack was. And the nice thing is I'm able to get this steel hot enough where I'm definitely getting a melting of both metals so that we should get a really, really good bond. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go around. Do an inch at a time, let it cool, inch at a time, let it cool, until this thing is fully welded once over. All right, here we are, guys. Engine side all welded up. So I'm gonna double weld it. I'm gonna weld it from the back side and from this side. I'm sure to the welding experts out there, that probably isn't necessary if I know how to weld it really, really well, but hey, this is not what I do primarily for a living, so please excuse welds that you don't like. But all I know is they have burned and melt the metal together. I just want to do it from both sides so that I'm 100% guaranteed that there is full melt. So I'm going to weld the other side and then we'll bring you back here because I'm actually going to weld another plate here to actually strengthen this area because it just seems like this might be something that uh, this is a weak spot in the suspension and frame design of these trucks. So. I'm going to do that, bring it back. All right, guys, so here we are. The last of the welding is finished. Again, please excuse my welds. I'm literally standing in the engine compartment. It's not the best. But so I added another plate on the back side of here. And then because this crack traveled over here, I added this other reinforcement plate there to deter any future cracking. Although I have a feeling this might just do the trick. So. The next step is to take the bracket, which is right there, line it up underneath and mark out where we need to re-drill the holes for this. And we'll be going. So here we are guys, the finished product. So like I said, I drilled the two holes, everything lined up perfectly as you can see because of my two bolts here line up and my two bolts there line up as well. And then I hit it with some spray paint and some undercoat. So this thing is ready to go. Now, two things. You'll notice that I have these lines here. They were in the first shot and then they were gone for the rest of the video. They're your transmission oil cooler lines. They attach to the transmission right there on the back side. Easy to get to at this point. And then right here and right here are the two other ends. So you can undo those to give yourself a little more freedom in accessing this area when you have to weld and grind and all that stuff. Number two, when you drill through steel, always start with the smallest drill bit first and you work your way up to the size hole you actually need. You burn out drill bits much faster when you start off with a big one. The other thing is you wanna use some kind of uh, lubricant, oil or whatever. I have this stuff that in the industry they call Molly D and that also helps from burning out your drill bits because trust me, it's eighth inch steel but you start doubling it up and you're asking for problems. So. As you can see guys, because you crack your engine cross member, it does not mean the end of the world for your truck. This is something you can repair and look with some tools, you can do it at home. So that's all for me guys. Hit the subscribe icon over here. Check out some of my other videos. I'm Stevie from the Minute Masters. Thanks for watching.